Hello, welcome to today's session. Today we will be talking about the concept of trade, the types of trade, and the comparative cost advantage theory. So let's start with what is trade and what do we mean by the various types of trade. So let's say I have a commodity A, okay, and I want to exchange that commodity A, or say I have bananas and I want to exchange those bananas for apples. Okay, so there are various forms of trade. The first is the symbol. I'll give the person B who has apples and take uh, give the person B who has apples the bananas and I'll take apples from the person B. So this is the most conventional type of trade which is known as barter system, which was prevalent in the previous era. Now, before we understand the various types of trade, let's have a quick look into what is trade. So, trade is basically ownership of goods and services, which is transferred from one person to another person. Okay, it can be in form of, as we discussed, the barter system, any financial transaction through banks, or by means of commerce. So if the trade exists between two persons, A and B, it is known as bilateral trade. If it exists between multiple persons, it is known as multilateral. Okay. Now, what are the types of trade? First is the ethical trade. Any trade I'm doing, I should be sure that it follows some basic ethics. For example, we have commonly heard about kinds of smuggling. So that's a kind of unethical trade. Okay. So ethical trade is those, those, that kind of trade that follows certain ethical limits. The next is fair trade. That means if you have tourists coming into your town, you are not cheating the tourists. Okay. That's a kind of fair trade. If you are asking for $1.20 to a person who is the resident of the town, you must ask $1.20 only to a person who is tourist in the town. And not just you should ask $1.50 because he is a foreign tourist. Okay. The next is retail trade. When you have like a bunch of 50 items, of those 50 items, you sell one item by one item. The next is wholesale trade. In this, you will sell all the 50 items together. The next kind of trade is international trade that has no international boundaries. Okay. The next trade is free trade. Free trade means the trade does not have any taxation. So there are no taxes. And you are free to access the market. The next kind of trade we will be talking about is a balanced trade. Balanced trade means you are balancing the imports and exports in any region. The next trade is silent or depot trade. This is a unique kind of trade. For example, in previous era, when French people do not have much exposure to China, the France, people from France were specific as and the people from China were speaking Chinese, so they cannot express their views. There was no common language, and what they would do is they would do a silent trade. They will uh, reveal things and objects silently and do a trade. The next is the most popular type type of trade in today's era. That's e-commerce or electronic trade. So the payment made electronically is through e-trade or e-commerce. And next is commodity trade. What is commodity trade? Commodities usually have uniform qualities and are major are and are uh, produced in large quantities by the producers. So that is a kind of commodity trade. The next is intra-regional trade. That is within a certain region, you have trade points. And next is inter-regional trade. That is outside the region you are having the trade. 
Now, these were the basic types of trade. We'll come on to the next topic, that is the most important topic we would be talking today, comparative cost advantage theory. What do we mean by the word comparative cost advantage and the word absolute advantage? So comparative cost advantage in a very simple definition means if two countries can both gain from the trade. Okay. If the absence of trade both have different relative cost to produce same goods. Okay. So this is what is comparative cost advantage. This model was specifically propounded by Ricardo. Ricardo in his theory said that nations tend to specialize what they produce the best. So for example, there are two things. I can say coconut versus um, silk. Okay. I say a country X can produce best, that is coconut. Okay. But nations also follow the comparative advantage and allow regional specialization. Now to understand this concept by means of theory and definition is a bit difficult. So what we'll do is we'll take a very simple example to understand that. But before we take the example, let's have certain assumptions for this model. The first and the foremost assumption is input. Okay. Labor productivity is constant. You have limited amount of labor in economy and labor is perfectly mobile so it can move from one place to another and there is a situation of perfect competition now holding all these assumptions true let's try to understand the basic concept of absolute advantage and comparative advantage so let's say here is the beautiful example. So let's say this is Tom and this is Terry. Both of the persons got lost in the ocean and their ships finally landed onto an island, a barren island where there is nothing. Okay. Both of them need to trade or to have something in order for the people in their ships to survive. Okay, now if they say here is Tom, here is Jerry, and you have apples and bananas on that island that you can obviously see, Tom finds 10 apples. In the same time, Jerry can find 5 apples. Tom can find, find, find 5 bananas. In the same time, Jerry can have 10 bananas. Okay, so Tom's efficiency for apples is higher and Jerry's efficiency for bananas is higher. So here both Tom and Jerry have absolute advantage. Now Tom has absolute advantage in apples. Okay, and Jerry has absolute advantage in banana. So that is what is the concept of absolute advantage. Now understand the concept of comparative advantage. So you have Tom, you have Jerry, you have apples and bananas. Now consider a case in which Tom can find 50 apples okay, and 150 bananas, but Jerry can find only 5 apples and 25 bananas. Now what would happen in this case, Tom has absolute advantage in both apples and bananas, that means Tom should produce both apples and bananas. But since to survive on that island, they need both apples and bananas, they have to do a trade-off. And what would be the trade-off here? Tom can produce, let's compare this vertically. So Tom can produce 10 times the apples as Jerry can do. And Tom can produce only six times the bananas.
bananas. You have 25 into 6 is 150 and 5 into 10 is 50. Okay. So Tom can produce 10 times the apples as compared to 6 times of bananas. That means Tom has a comparative advantage in case of apples while Jerry has comparative advantage in case of bananas. Okay, so here is Tom, here is Jerry. Now, if I try to understand the same diagram horizontally, okay, I can say for Tom, one apple would be equivalent to three bananas, while for Jerry, one apple would be equivalent to finding five bananas. So Tom will have comparative advantage in production of apples till the point it reaches five bananas. So one apple is equal to four banana would also be acceptable till the time it reaches five bananas. At the point, if I say Tom have by Tom, we say one apple is equal to six bananas. At that point of time, Tom will start having comparative advantages in case of bananas. So the people in the ship, so Tom ship is the apples, the Jerry ship, the people in the Jerry ship. So all the people in the Tom ship will work together apples and Jerry ship will work together bananas. They have both in hand, they will exchange the commodities and this kind of trade would be profitable for both Tom and Jerry ship. So this is how we understand the concept of comparative advantage. Now while understanding the concept of comparative advantage, we come across the term which is opportunity cost. We will be covering that in a separate session. So stay tuned for the next session in which we would be talking about the opportunity cost and the trade blocks. So have a good day ahead.